الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters, I'm your brother in, uh, in Islam, Amran ibn Mansur and some of you may know me by the name Da'uman This is Thursday and as you guys know every Thursday we do something called Toba Night Toba Night is uh, a project that we started to encourage you guys to, to repent from your sins. Of course, it's not like Thursday is the only night for which you make Tawbah. No, we should make Tawbah every single night, every day, every morning. We should be Munib. Munib and ilayh. Munib means we should be constantly repenting and turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every aspect of our life. But every Thursday, we do a reminder. We do a reminder on Instagram live to encourage you guys and myself first and foremost to remember the sins that we've done across the week and to beg and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for those sins. And the reason I give you a reminder is because sometimes our hearts become hard. Our hearts become hard because of the sins. So we forget to repent. And this reminder hopefully is there to melt the heart, to soften the heart inshallah wa ta'ala with Allah's permission so that you can become aware of the reality of your and my situation and then repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end. And I encourage you inshallah wa ta'ala to stay true to the end. Without any further ado, let us begin. Today I want to talk about the fact that the sins that we do if we do not make repentance for them, they are the cause for our destruction. Brothers and sisters, I'm not even talking about the destruction in the left next life. I'm talking about the destruction in this life. I'm talking about the destruction in this life. Some of us have problems. In fact, many of us, the majority of us do. We have problems. We are suffering from problems in our home. We have parent problems, problems with our siblings. Some of us have relationship problems. Either whether you're in a halal relationship or a haram relationship, we have problems. Okay, We have financial problems. <coughs> we've got people that cause us pain. We've got people that hurt us. We've got people that harm us. We've got, we've got, we've, we've, we've got people attacking us, slandering us, backbiting us, spreading rumours, bullying us, making fun of us, mocking us. We've got problems okay we've got problems why do we have all these problems in our life brothers and sisters did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala place these problems over us because he just wants to see us suffer if any one of us would believe that it would be kufrun billahi azza wa jal it would be kufr because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not enjoy seeing us suffer Allah doesn't need for us to suffer Allah doesn't need for us to even be in prosperity and if you was to imply that Allah wants to see us suffer, you're implying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unjust. You're apply, implying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is oppressive. Wallahi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most just. So if Allah is, is just and He's not oppressive, and therefore He is not inflicting us with this horrible illnesses, sicknesses, diseases, poverty, financial problems, pain, suffering, betrayal that we experience in our life. If we're being inflicted from this and Allah is ultimately in control, then that means if it's being inflicted upon us, there has to be a reason for it. And the only reason that could justify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inflicting us with this, which is in line with His justice, is the fact that it is a punishment for our sins. It is a punishment for our sins. Are you paying attention? If you feel heartbreak, your sins and my sins are what brought it. If you feel pain, if you lost money, if people betrayed you, it's because of our sins, brothers and sisters. And the Salaf, the Sahaba, the students of the Sahaba and the students who are the three righteous first generations of this Ummah, they understood this. They embedded this principle so much in their heart that for example, the likes of Fudayl ibn Iyad, if he used to come home and his wife was rude to him, if his children were disobedient to him, and if the animal that he would ride, the horse or the camel, was disobedient to him, being difficult, he would say, my wife, my children, my animal that I ride have all disrespected me, dishonored me, disobeyed me because of my sins. If we come home and our wives disrespect us, we say, this is her fault. If our children disrespect us, we say, what filthy children. If our car breaks down, we say, what a stupid car. We blame the mechanic. We blame the car company for not fixing up the car at the time it gave it to us. But do we stop and think for a second? The reason why my car broke down, this is a sin. This is, this is a punishment. 
I'm going, I'm experiencing difficulty because of the time I smoked weed, because of the time I backbited. The reason that my wife is not obeying me is because of the time I made haram money. It's because of the time I disrespected my parents. It's because of the time I took her for granted. The reason that your husband maybe is not respecting you and dishonoring you is because of the time that you walked out the house disobeying Allah. Maybe you weren't dressed the way you were supposed to. Maybe you weren't covering your modesty the brother was not he was shaving his beard that's the reason why he got sacked that's the reason maybe why he didn't pass his exam maybe you were wearing trousers below your ankles maybe you're watching pornography maybe you're masturbating maybe you're listening to music maybe you're chatting to girls maybe you're chatting to guys maybe you're doing all these sins those sins are the reason for why which we are suffering in our life brothers and sisters this is real and we have textual evidence to back this up when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned all the nations that he destroyed and I give you an example of some of the nations he destroyed the people of Lut the people of Lut because of their sexual perversion and because of their disbelief and rejection of their messenger Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them a punishment where they were scooped up their whole land, their city was scooped up and lifted to the highest heaven. So high that the angels from the first heaven could hear their dogs barking. That's how high they were lifted. And then they were taken and smashed back down to the ground and pelted with stones. That nation, why did Allah destroy it? I'll tell you in a second. But let's talk about another nation Allah destroyed. Allah destroyed the people of Thamud. وَإِنْ كَانَتْ صَيْحَةٍ وَاحِدَةً وَإِنْ كَانَتْ صَيْحَةً وَاحِدَةً one scream, one scream that was so severe, it destroyed them. It caused their, 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 their hearts to rip. It caused their bodies to be destroyed. One scream finished them all. Why? Because of their kufr and their shit. I'll tell you in a bit more detail the specific reason why Allah destroyed them. <coughs> the people of Nuh were flooded. A flood so high that it engulfed and encompassed what? The mountains, brothers and sisters. Why were these people destroyed? Why were these people destroyed time and time again? Why was Fir'aun? فَأَخَذْنَا فِرْعَونُ وَجُنُودَهُ فَنَبَتْنَاهُمْ فِي الْيَمِّ وَهُوَ مُلِيمٌ Allah said, we grabbed Fir'aun and his army and we took them in a deep ocean. Allah took them in an ocean. He swallowed them. He drowned them. And he was to blame. Why was this happening? وفي عاد إذ أرسلنا عليهم الريح العقيم ما تذر من شيء أتت عليه إلا ما تذر من شيء أتت عليه إلا ما تذر من شيء أتت إلا عليه جعلته كرميم I think I've got the verse wrong. I'll double check. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the people of Ad. Allah sent a, a, a storm, a wind, a wind that, 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 that destroyed them. It stayed for days and days, and for a whole week, day and night, the wind came <coughs> and it destroyed them. Sometimes we see the clouds coming and we think it's a glad tiding. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would become scared when he see the cloud. Because you know these clouds, from it came winds, from it came rain. Rather, the winds were pushing the clouds and from the actual clouds came rain that destroyed nations. Why, brothers and sisters? Allah said, فَكُلَّنْ أَخَذْنَا بِذَنْبِهِ Allah said, all of them, we took them, we destroyed them, we punished them all because of their sins. Because of their sins, brothers and sisters. Now that is a greater degree of punishment in this life. Complete annihilation and destruction. Brothers and sisters, but every single sin and difficulty that you go through, every calamity you go through, every every loved one <coughs> that turns against you, every sickness, every illness, every time you stub your toe in the door, every time you bump your head as you come down the second floor, any time, brothers and sisters, any pain, any difficulty reaches you and me, it is because of my sins, it's because of your sins. Wallahi, it is the case. And this ayah is a proof. Rather, another ayah, Allah said, wa, Allah said, Ma asabaka min hasanatin fa min Allah. Allah said, any good that comes to you and comes to me is from Allah. We don't bring good. We don't know how to bring good. Wa ma asabaka min sayyatin fa min nafsik. <coughs> but any evil that comes to us, any evil, any difficulty that comes to us is because of our own sins. Because of our own sins. Brothers and sisters, wallahi, this is scary. And shall I tell you something? You know the, the depression that you feel, which is a pain and a calamity. You know the sicknesses that we feel. The misguidance that we go through. Brothers and sisters, 
Do you think this is Allah holding you account for all of your sins? Do you think Allah is punishing you right now for every sin that you and I have done? No, no. Rather, when you feel that sickness, when you feel someone betray you, slander you, backbite you, when you feel that financial loss, when you feel that poverty, when you feel that pain, when you feel that oppression, when you feel that suffering in this life, whatever that suffering may be, if your husband cheated on you, if you cheated on your husband, if your, if your boyfriend played you, of course, which is haram anyway, your girlfriend played you, whatever, whatever pain you go through, this is only you and me being punished for a small amount of our sins. Look at the evidence for this. Allah said, وَمَا أَصَابَ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ Allah said that any calamity that afflicts me and you, it is because of what evil, what sins our hands have done. Huh? It's for the sins that our hands have done. But look at what Allah said. وَيَعْفُ عَنْ كَثِيرٌ But Allah already forgave a lot. Kathir means the majority. Huh? Means a lot. Allah said, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ Any harm, any calamity, any difficulty that touches me and you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this is because of our sins. But just in case we thought Allah was holding you account for all of your fornication, for all of the time you were lips in another chick, or a sister was lips in a guy, for every time you went out without makeup, for every time, sorry, every time you went out with makeup, every time you went out the house without your hijab, every time brothers went out without their beard, with their beard shaved, every time they went out with their trousers, or any time they had a trousers below their ankles, any time you swore, any time you listened to music, every time you missed a prayer, every time you didn't fast, every time you. Did did bid'ah or any sin. Allah said, no, no, no. I'm not. This pain is not the result of all of that. This depression is not the result of all of that. This heartbreak is not the result of all of those sins. This suffering, this sadness, this poverty, this financial crisis is not the suffering, is not the, sorry, is not the result of all of those punishments. No. Because Allah said, Ya'fu and kathir. The majority of those sins you had been forgiven for. And had Allah not forgiven us, we would have been destroyed. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in another ayah, He said, وَلَوْ, 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 وَلَوْ Allah said, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to hold the human beings to account for all of their sins, for all of the evil that they done, for all of the oppression, Allah said, مَا تَرَكَ عَلَيْهَا مِن دَابَةٍ وَلَكِنْ يُؤَخِّرُهُمْ إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ مُسَمَّى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished the humans for every single sin, every single oppression, every single evil that the humans did, every shirk, every bid'ah, every major sin, Allah said they would, the punishment would be so severe, there would not be even a single creature left on the face of this earth. There won't be a single creature, everything would be destroyed. That is the magnitude of our sins. That's why Allah said, kafir." The majority of the sins, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He forgave. I'm going to give you some examples, brothers and sisters. I, and you know, you, you, know, you know what's shocking? I keep saying to you guys, yeah, you know, when I mentioned the ayah, Allah said, وَمَا أَصَابَكَ مِنْ سَيِّعَةٍ فَمِنْ نَفْسِكَ That any evil that touches you, I keep saying, Allah is saying, it's from, from my hands and your hands. <coughs> and that I'm saying that because I'm not making myself free from this ayah. But I want to tell you that the ayah is actually speaking to you in the second person directly. Allah is actually saying, وَمَا أَصَابَكَ Allah is saying, you. There's not a single sin that you do. There's not a single calamity that comes to you. You, my sister, who's listening. You, my brother. It's not me saying. Allah is saying. Allah is saying, there's not a single calamity that comes to you. Except it's your sins. It's your sins. Now look back, brothers and sisters, and think of the sins that you've done. Our sins are too much. Imam Muhammad ibn Sirin, rahimahullah, one time, and he was a student of the Sahaba, Muhammad ibn Sirin, he was going through a great calamity. And then he began crying. He began crying profusely. And they asked him, why are you crying? He said, the reason I'm crying is because this calamity that I'm facing right now is a punishment because there was a man and I ridiculed him. I insulted him. You know what's powerful about this? That these men, their sins were so small that they, when they would go through a calamity, 
<coughs> they would be able to identify exactly what sin is the reason for why which they are being punished. But if I ask you, my sister, if I ask you, my brother, what is the sin that you've done? For why you are suffering from this calamity in your life. You will not be able to recollect. You'll be like, subhanAllah, where do I begin? The sins are so many. You won't be able to pinpoint exactly which sin. But the righteous, they can because they count their sins. They know. And then when they do a sin, it's like they're waiting. Waiting for the punishment of Allah to come. And you know what? The ones who have knowledge and the ones who are practicing, when they do a sin, their punishment is more severe because they had knowledge and they still disregarded the fact that Allah was watching them and they sinned. So for them, the punishment is severe. For that reason, we, I need to repent. I want to give you some examples of punishments and some of you may be able to relate right now some of you may be able to relate right now I want to give you some examples of some punishments some calamities that we go through in life not all but I only want to mention a handful then I want to mention to you textual evidence that shows you that this calamity and suffering in a person's life is a direct result of a sin <coughs> poverty and disease poverty and disease Who's broke today? Who's suffering financially? Suffering so much that they're saying, you know what? I need to take out a loan to go uni. I need to get a mortgage to get a yard. I need to do some haram income. Financial. Who's got illnesses, medical illnesses? It could just be that you're suffering from this from general sins. But specifically, it could be why? Because of the following sin. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the hadith in Surah Ibn Majah. He said, Ya ma'ashar al-muhajirin. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke to his companions. He said, Khamsun, five things. If you are, if you are tested with them, Wa'udhu billahi. And I seek refuge in Allah. And tudrikuhunna. I seek refuge in Allah that they don't reach you. But the Prophet is trying to tell you there are five things that if they reach you, there's going to be peak, there's going to be suffering, there's going to be chaos. And he's saying, I seek refuge in Allah that these five things, you don't fall into them. These five sins, if you do, it's game over, the Prophet is trying to tell you. I'm only going to mention the first to you. The first is the Prophet said, Lam fi qawmin qat. The Prophet wasallam said that fahisha, Filth, filth, promiscuity, zina, boyfriends, girlfriends, fornication, sexual intercourse, pornography, inappropriate clothing, immodest clothing, tight clothing. The Prophet said this does not spread and become apparent in a people, spread in a people like it is today. So much so that it's inflicted us from the kuffar. It doesn't spread, spread so much that the Prophet said, if it does, the consequence will be, The Prophet said that plague will come and poverty will come. And illnesses will come, the likes of which people have never seen in the past. Illnesses will come, the likes of which the people have never seen in the past. And AIDS is a proof of this. It's a proof that the Prophet ﷺ was being told this directly from Allah. This is divine inspiration because how did he know that when sexual intercourse spreads illegally outside of marriage or adultery, that people will be inflicted with diseases the likes have never been heard before? The Prophet knew because this was coming from Allah. AIDS, HIV, these are all new. Poverty. The world is suffering in poverty. Look at the places in the world where poverty spread. It's because also fornication spread. Today we are also broke. Look at the youngsters struggling financially. But look at how much pornography they watch. Look at fahisha. Fahisha means filth. Filth. Promiscuity. Dressing inappropriately. Sisters without hijab wear makeup is fahisha. 
dressing in tight clothes, revealing got fashion. Guys exposing their aura, exposing their, their body's fashion, the, the, the private parts of their body's fashion. Boyfriends, girlfriends, fashion. Fashion, Allah. Fashion, all of this. Sexual intercourse, fashion. Masturbation, fashion. All this fashion, Allah. And the Prophet Sallallahu they said this doesn't become spreading to people except Allah will give them plague, Allah will give them poverty, and Allah will give them illnesses. You know, people they say, wow, we live in a day and age where medical science has spread to a level that has never been seen before. Look at the big hospital buildings and all of the machinery and all of the medicines. It's true, Allah, you have medicines for so many different diseases. Illnesses, sorry, treatments for so many different diseases. But is that something to be boasting about? One wise man said, no, all of these hospitals and all of these medical advancements to show you that they're combating all these different diseases doesn't show society's progressed. Rather, it shows society's gone backwards. You know why? Because back in the day, they never had all these diseases. And they never had all these diseases and people were still living. People were still surviving. They had limited medication for limited disease. And now medication is spread. And you need more treatments, more medicine. Because more illnesses have come. More illnesses and diseases have come. The likes of which the people never experienced in the past. And this is because the people are sinning more. And Allah is punishing them more. Another example of a calamity is depression. Depression is real. You know, anxiety, depression. It's real. Where did it come from? Allah said, Anyone who turns away from Allah's reminder, the Quran, you turn away from it. The Sunnah, you turn away from it. Whether you turn away in shirk or you turn away in bid'ah, innovation, <coughs> or you turn away in sin. You hear an ayah saying, lower your gaze and you look at women. Women look at guys. Furthermore, you watch pornography. You hear hadith saying men and women shouldn't be alone. You go link up with girls. You hear narrations about hijab. And sisters are out there doing makeup tutorials. And defending people who, wear, who do makeup tutorials and hijab tutorials. You turn away in these sins. You know what the punishment is? Allah says, فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِشَةَ This person is going to be living a depressed life. Depression comes when you turn away from Allah. Depression comes when you turn away from Allah. Rather, Allah said, He told you how the opposite of depression comes. A happy life, a good life, a positive life. Allah said, Man amila amala. Sorry, Man amila salihan. Anyone who does righteous actions, min dakarin or unta, from any man or woman. It's not specific to the men, it's not specific to the women. Any man, any woman who does righteous actions. And that person is a believer. Oh, what did Allah say? Allah said, Allah is going to give you a good life. Allah is going to give you a good life. Allah is going to give you a good life. You know what's interesting here? Allah said, that noon sound, noon of Tawqeed. That means Allah saying, we will make them live a good life. We will make them give a good life. We'll make them, we'll make them, we'll make them live a good life. Allah is emphasizing, you will live a good life. No more self-harm. No more cutting your wrists. No more depression. No more depression tablets. No more listening to music to, to get away from that depression. No more drinking, no more drugs to try and hide that depression. Rather, that will be Leading you back to the depression. What takes you away from the depression? Man amila man amila salihan. Anyone who does a righteous action, and that person is a believer. And you know what? The greatest calamity is, brothers and sisters, the greatest calamity that a person can be inflicted with. Do you know what it is? It's misguidance. To be misguided. For guidance of Islam, to be prevented from your heart. <coughs> a brother came to me and he said to me he said the verses in the Quran are so clear how is it that everyone 
disobeys. The proofs of Islam are so clear. The proofs of the Sunnah, of the manage of the Salaf, the methodology of the Salaf is so clear. Yeah, people still innovate. The Hadith are so clear. You will be punished for your sins, for interest, usury, riba, fornication, backbiting, slander. It's so clear. He said, why do people still do it? The fact that they do it, he said, I think it's because everyone's possessed. And I said, it's true, a lot of people are possessed. But there are many people who are not possessed. But he said, how can it be that they're still sinning? Hellfire is real. Paradise is real. You're going to die. You're all going to die. Death is real. Punishment of the grave is real. Why is it that these people are not listening then? And I said to Makhi, it's because the hearts have become hard. Because of their sins. Because of their sins, the heart has become so hard it cannot accept the truth. The Prophet ﷺ said, every time you do a sin, a black dot is placed on your heart. So you do another sin, another dot, and another dot, and another dot, and another dot, until the heart becomes dark. And then the Prophet said, the heart will not be able to, it will not be able to, it will not be able to verify, it will not be able to understand what is good and what is wrong. It will not be able to tell the difference between right and the wrong. It cannot tell the difference. So a person... Like look, look at these when I look at these people online, defending these YouTubers, these Muslim YouTubers, why are misguided? But they're defending them. Telling people like us, why are you saying this is wrong? They genuinely cannot tell the difference between right and wrong. Their hearts have become so dark, so hard because of the sins. And sisters, well, you have to be careful. Sisters who don't wear hijab. Every second you're outside the house not wearing hijab. When I say hijab, I'm not talking about hijab with a bit of hair hanging out. Hijab with makeup. No, no, that's not hijab. Hijab is the real hijab now. The jilbab. When you go outside the house, please, um, do you think I enjoy <coughs> keep talking to you guys? It's because I'm genuinely concerned. Every time you step out the house and you're not wearing a hijab or a jilbab, that's a sin. Every time you're out, every second you're outside the house, you're accumulating sins. Like every time you're at work, going to school, you got makeup on, you don't wear hijab or you don't wear the correct hijab, sin. Every time you're wearing tight, sin after sin after sin. The reason I'm saying this is because this is a constant sin that stays with you the whole time. A constant sin. You're constantly in a state of sin. That punishment is so severe. But you know, and you know, this is one of the reasons why I feel like so many sisters are depressed. So many sisters are always so stressed in life. So many sisters are suffering from so many. Even the guys are. Guys have got bare sins. Drugs, alcohol, music, pornography. But this is a constant sin that is with you every second that you're outside the house. And I feel like a lot of it is because of this. And you know what's even more scary is the effect that's having on your heart. That's why sisters are going towards this feminist rubbish. Their hearts are becoming so hard. And when I say feminism, I'm not talking about women's rights. Women's rights is hak. We believe in it and it's a part of Islam. But feminism is a belief that your rights can be found outside of Islam. It's a belief that why, why, why are we being told how to dress? Why are these guys telling us how to dress? Guys are not telling you how to dress. Allah is telling you how to dress. But the reason why you can't take it is because the hearts become so hard because of the sins of Allah. And if your heart becomes hard, you know what happens to it? It becomes like a cup that's been flipped upside down. I can put all the water I want in that cup. But, but, that cup will not receive any water because it's upside down. I have to flip the cup the right way up. And that's what happens to the heart because of the sins. At the heart, it's been flipped upside down. The guidance is coming every day. You're hearing lectures, reminders. Quran is being told, people are advising you. But you know what? Your heart's not receiving any of it because it's become hard and deflects it. And some people, they die like this. They die like this. But brothers and sisters, if you repent to Allah today, your heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will start to soften it for you. Your heart will become soft and Allah will find a way for you. Do you want to suffer? 
brothers and sisters, our sah- the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet they lived such a good life. They had the footsteps of China in the east to the shores of Spain in the west. They controlled it. Diamonds, jewels, riches were being flooded to them. They were living the life of life. Why did this come to them? Because they obeyed. <coughs> because they obeyed Allah. They weren't sinning. Now look at us. We as a nation are being humiliated. We individually are suffering. Look at our sins. Do you not see the correlation? And pay attention. If me and you are being punished for sins in this life, imagine the punishment on the day of judgment. So I ask you, who is going to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today? Who's going to change now? Who's going to leave behind their sins now? Who's going to say, I've had enough of these sins. I want to become a better Muslim. Who's going to identify sins that they've been doing? And who's going to now stop them and start doing deeds of righteousness? I beg you, in the name of Allah, who's going to make change now? I want you to mention in the comments, those of you who are going to make tawbah to Allah now. I want to see it from you. So you can encourage others. Allahu Akbar, strive to Jannah sent me. May Allah accept your repentance. Muslim of the Sunnah says, Salaam alaikum, floor inspiration said me. Muslim of the Sunnah said, Is Abaya correct? You should be wearing the jilbab. Mojim said me. Lil Muzi said me. MashaAllah. Asma said me. Allahumma barik. Ibrahim said, I'm changing now. Allahu Akbar. Beauty's big sister said, All of us. Allahumma barik. Maya said me. Bint Muhammad said me. Allahu Akbar. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. SubhanAllah. Guys, soon as this life turns off, if you've been, please don't miss a single prayer after today. Don't miss a single prayer. I beg you. Don't fall back into your sins. Brothers, delete all those girls from your phone. My sisters, delete all those guys from your phone. I beg you, please. Repent now. Seeing you say this, like it's warm in my heart. Allah Akbar. Who else is gonna make tov? Who else is gonna change? Striving Muslims said, "I will." Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Chadi Gaines said, "I see you as a companion." Well, I barak Allah fi. I love you, Akhi. Companion of you, not the companion of the Prophet. I love you. I love you, Akhi. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allah is making me emotional. Alex said, Me. Allahu Akbar. Guys, I'm going to head off, inshallah ta'ala. Go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and cry to Him. Cry to your Lord for the sins that you've done. You will find him a merciful Lord. You will find him a merciful Lord. And when you ask him to forgive you, please forgive me as well. Ask him to forgive me, sorry, as well. Please ask him to forgive me for all of my sins. And ask him to forgive my family and my loved ones. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdi. أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته